Good afternoon and welcome to the information session for the certificate in game-based learning. I'm Veronica Martinez and I'm happy to be part of this session. Here's the agenda for today's session. Among other things, note that we have assigned some time for the instructor to talk about the program and also we'll have time for Q&A to ensure that we address your questions. Please type your questions in the chat box. Let's first begin by sharing what Extension and International Program is, or EIP. EIP is a department within California State University Fullerton that offers non-state funded programs for every stage of life. EIP collaborates with university and community partners to provide programs that meet the changing needs of local, regional, and international students. EIP create programs with campus, community, and business needs in mind to provide pathways for people to learn skills that may help them move forward with life and career goals. What I can share about our team is that although each of us has unique responsibilities, we all work closely to support the program, our instructor, and our students. Our team members are Rayleigh Saldana, program assistant and main contact for potential and current students, Blake Jastrike, program instructional designer, Corny Marsak, program manager, and I'm Veronica Martinez, the program lead. Before I go over uh, our program overview, let's start a poll to find out what type of educators we have in the audience. So, so far we have a community college, uh, university, and someone that is not a teacher or instructor. The game-based learning program certificate was designed for educators by educators. It was successfully launched last summer. There are three required courses. Each course is six weeks long, so it takes about five months to complete the program. The class fee is 500, so this means that the program cost for the three classes is $1,500. There are no prerequisites to register, and you may take the courses in any order. However, to request a certificate, we require you to complete the three courses. So the three courses are listed below. The first course begins pretty soon in June uh, 14. So we look forward to see you there. Uh, before uh, we continue, let's answer another poll. We have one of each, <laughs> so this is good. So I'll end the poll and share the results. Let me now introduce you to our program instructor, Randall Fujimoto. Randall has been involved with the design of this program. He has over 10 years of experience in the field. Randall, thank you for being here and please take it away. Okay, thanks Veronica. Um, you can go to the next slide away from this picture that looks like a, somebody told me it looks like a driver's license picture. So you get you a better photo. Um, so I'll, I'll just uh, kind of go on over a, uh, 
a broad overview of the first course, game-based learning, uh, introduction to game-based learning. So, uh, and give you just some foundational things about the course and about how it's run and what to expect if, uh, if and when you're in the class. Okay, next slide. Okay, so game-based learning, when, um, when most people think about game-based learning, they just think about, um, probably most people think it's just playing, um, playing some type of educational game, playing a digital game on the computer or iPad or phone or something. Um, but it's made up of a lot of different um, types. And so you can see all of them here. So in addition to um, video games or digital like educational games, we have like regular analog games. So board games, card games, physical games, um, games outside. Um, and there's um, then there's, there's their digital games. Um, Video games, when I'm talking about video games, it's entertainment video games. So um, things like, um, well, things like Minecraft was initially made as a, as a video game, but it's uh, become a lot more education friendly. Um, but then you can use a host of other video games like, um, you know, even, um, so there's, there's Roblox, there's, um, and, and then there's a, the, the console high-end games, the Call of Duty games that you actually use, have people use. Um, there's any games that you can you can um, you can use part or all of it to teach uh, specific subjects. So um, a lot of these games, like um, like Fortnite, for example, um, it has um, detailed uh, data, like a data dashboard, and so you can do a lot of uh, data analysis, statistics, math, etc. Uh, a lot of them has phys have physics engines, so you can use those for physics lessons. Um, then there's games made specifically for education. And I think these are very uh, more difficult and, and to make and to become popular because um, they not only have to be fun, but they also have to be effectively educational. So um, in the chat, um, can you name any educational games, strictly educational games that, that, that you've heard of or that you think might be good? because they're, they're um, like, there's the Oregon Trail from a long time ago. Um, there are, yeah, William, the, there's, so those are more platform for, for games, right? Um, thinking about specific games like, um, like Oregon Trail or like Carmen Sandiego. Um, there were games like Math Blaster before that were, weren't that great, but they sold quite a bit. Um, so William maybe. is talking about Kahoot and Nearpod. Yeah, yeah, and I saw those. Yeah, someone else is talking about Duolingo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, yeah, so those are good. Um, those are more uh, um, Duolingo is interesting. It's not really a game. It's gamified. It has like game elements in it. But this is I'm talking about more about specific educational games that are made specifically for education. Oh, Code.org. Yep, very good site. Um, so anyways, it's, it's hard to think of a good educational game that's just made specifically for education because games, they cost a lot. And um, if they don't sell too well, people, the publishers won't make them. So that's why you don't see a good, a big handful of super popular educational games out there. There's also game design projects where you have your students make games themselves um, and then share the games um, with, their student, with, uh, with other students to learn from them. There's escape games. Um, you've all played done escape rooms, hopefully. Uh, if not, go do an escape room. They're a lot of fun. New media games, referring to VR, AR, XR type new, uh, new games. And then gamification, which is um, different from game-based learning. Gamification basically means to take something that's not a game and turn it into a game it's by adding game-like elements or mechanics to it. So, for example, Duolingo, it has like um, some game mechanics to it, um, but it's not necessarily a game, it's gamified, it's a gamified learning system. So all of these are all subsets of game-based learning. Okay, next slide. So what are the benefits of using game-based learning? Um, when you talk about a game, uh, a game by definition is, um, an activity where you have to be 100% active in order to play, in order to, to, to consume the medium. 
um, which is different from any other any other media, right? So you, you think about um, a video, like a video lecture, where you're paying attention maybe half the time or less than half the time. Um, a book um, you could be reading, but oftentimes that um, it's not absorbed and you have to go and reread it. Games, and um, just by definition, you have to be active. And so we know there's no good learning without active learning. And so, so therefore, um, games have such a, a great educational potential because um, they are by definition an active medium. And so what, uh, what can you learn through game-based learning? Basically you can learn any, you know, anything from, from, um, that you can from any other media. So any, any subject matter at all. So you take um, anything from sciences to humanities to um, all these soft skills, important um, 21st century SEL character skills that are important and we know that are critical to future success. Okay, next slide. Okay, so now um, this, uh, there's only a couple more slides and um, I don't want this to be um, a lecture so much uh, because that's not really what game-based learning is about. It's not about lecturing and, um, and then you absorbing the knowledge. It's more interactive. And so um, this is where uh, the gameful mindset comes in, the, this notion of a gameful mindset. And what this means is just the, um, the mindset of a gamer. And so we're, we're in this generation called the gamer generation where all young people and adults now are pretty much all gamers. Um, we've got kids that have, uh, I think I, I read a statistic that by the time they're 21, um, they played on average about 10,000 hours of gaming which is about the same amount of time that they've been in school. So what does this mean? Um, the, if you do something over and over and over, um, it obviously has an effect on how, um, how, you, how you develop and how you, um, and, and the fact that they're gaming at such a long, uh, young age, that has an effect on the brain development. And there's actually studies about how gaming has physically rewired the, the brains of, of people that have played hours and hours of gaming. And so what this, how does this manifest in behavior is, is that this generation of gamers approaches learning and thinking and living through this lens of a gamer. And this is what I call a gameful mindset. And these are some of the characteristics of a person with a gameful mindset that they have a growth mindset mentality that, that they can do anything given enough effort uh, and they're not limited by uh, their their uh, ability or intelligence. They can they can do whatever they want. And in order to do that, they they look at failure as something that's a, a positive thing that that helps them learn. So you, you learn to embrace failure. You learn to oftentimes gamers seek failure to figure out what not to do, and then they can eliminate that and and move forward. Uh, just in time learning is a is a um, key characteristic here. In traditional education, um, we typically see a lecture, like I'm giving now, um, and then followed by like a test, like some type of assessment. So it's like, it's learning and then doing. Um, you, you read a book, you write an essay, that type of thing. In gaming, you're learning as you're doing. So it's learn while doing. And so you do something and if you get stuck, then you go to YouTube or you ask somebody or you, you find resources then and you get that learning just in time, right? So that, that's, that's a, a, a key concept here. And that's, um, that's a key way that, that we approach technology today, right? Uh, they used to make manuals for like phones and things like that, right? And nobody read them. So they stopped making them because you just start using it. And if you can't figure it out, you go to YouTube or you figure it out just in time. So anyways, that, that's, a, that's a key characteristic. Uh, related to that is continuous feedback that um, to be able to um, get to do something and then know if you're on the right track or not. And so in traditional education, we have a lot of uh, emphasis on summative feedback on the big exams or tests, high stakes tests at the end of the term type thing. And we put a lot of emphasis on that. Whereas in games, it's all about the continuous formative feedback. So everything you do in a game, you make a move, the game tells you, 
yes or no or gives you some points or, or so so you know exactly you you make you click a button and you get some feedback right away but we don't get that in schools right we we turn an essay and maybe a, a few days later maybe we get a grade and then you just move on from there so it's it's uh in games it's a lot of continuous formative feedback and maybe you get to a boss level or something like that and you get the summative feedback there so uh, that's a key characteristic for the game of mindset constant iteration um meaning that uh, you're open to um that 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 you want to um try early and fail and then try again and keep on building on your on your successes from there but it requires a safe environment in order to do that because in traditional schools you can't make a mistake like usually you get one chance and that's it so you don't have this opportunity for constant iteration um more a more general concept is the idea of flow and if um and hopefully uh you you've heard of the flow channel and and um uh, the state of flow. It's basically when you lose sense of time because you're you're so engrossed in something, and that's what games are, and that's what learning and education should be. That you should be um, in a lot of flow states because you're so absorbed in that. Um, there's one uh, last one, last characteristic here. It's a more uh, it's a very broad general one, um, and so if you can think of what might be on this list. Um, and type it into the chat. I'll give you a minute just to think about it and, and make some guesses. This is the whole interactive part of this, uh, this uh, presentation. So go ahead and type in some guesses. One, cool, uh, good guess, but uh, very related, very close. Any other guesses? Um, one more, there's one more characteristic to this uh, in this list. So there's six of them here. What's the seventh one? How else do gamers approach the world? Oh, back. There you go. Stay there. <laughs> no guesses. William was on the right track there. Competition. Um, no, that is um, that a lot of gamers are um, are driven by competition, but um, that's an interesting one. And I talk about that in the course a lot. That that what um, what value does competition bring? Individual and team competition. What what value does that bring? What motivation does that bring? And oftentimes with individual competitions, there's a winner and a loser. So is it is it um, what happens to the loser? then so anyways it's uh it is another thing that gamers are all about though okay i'll give you um a few more seconds it's related to fun it's almost synonymous with fun so okay we'll go ahead and show you next slide veronica or next uh reveal please okay there you go so it's play um yeah, adventure, very close. So uh, the notion of play is um, is super important because, because we think of play as something that shouldn't be done at school except for at recess, recess time. But play and learning go hand in hand, right? With animals, that's all, that's how they learn is, to, is by playing. And by playing, by providing space to play and explore, um, you encourage like uh, uh, learners agency then they 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 discover they can discover their own learning that way. So there's a lot of advantages in, in putting playful type activities into your curriculum. And so be, especially because this is what gamers expect and like. Okay, we'll move on to the last slide here. And this is um, one of the foundational pieces of not just game-based learning, but of education in general. So our problem today is that um, kids aren't engaged, right? Kids are, you ask, there's, uh, you ask a high school student, the number one, uh, just a, one word to describe their experience. And, and the most common word is, is bored. And it's because the, um, it is boring. I mean, when you sit in a class, um, 
a lot of the stuff, you know, they could care less about. And, you know, I've sat in high school classes and a lot of stuff I could care less about. Um, so it's the, engage, how do you engage? And I think that's, this is what through all levels of education, how do we better engage our students um, to want to learn? Because, you know, um, uh, learning, learning is enjoyable. Learning, there's an enjoyment of learning curve. I always talk about that um, when you're, when you're small, when you're a preschool or a baby, all you want to do is learn. You just keep asking why, why, why. And then somewhere on middle school, the curve starts to slope down because you're forced to read something that you don't want to read and take some tests that you don't want to take. And by, the, by high school, our enjoyment of learning is, is very, very low. So how do we increase that engagement and enjoyment of learning? It's through these, through basically comes down to it when you when you look at motivation there's extrinsic extrinsic and intrinsic motivation and um extrinsic motivation basically is you know things that um things that are external to the person so like you know gold stars or giving them money for to do a chore or something like that so we know that 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 works in the short term but it doesn't work uh, in the long term, because once that once the dollar goes away for the chore, the chore stops, uh, and it often undermines intrinsic motivation. So, what I like to do with with uh, any game or any educational activity is just to analyze it with this framework of social. Does it have a social element? Um, does does the person have a purpose for doing this? Is it meaningful? Um, do they have autonomy to do this or not? And is their mastery? Do they, is it something that they want to master? So if I look at any learning activity in this framework and analyze the activity, does it have any or all of these? And if so, if it does to a great degree, then it's a good activity, game-based or not. So this is the foundation of game uh, gamification and, and um, what, what um, you can do to make your classroom more game-like in a good way, in a, in a long lasting intrinsic, intrinsically valuable way. So those, um, the game base, the, the gameful mindset characteristics, the intrinsic motivators, these are the foundation of the whole program. And um, through the program, um, we go through lesson plan ideas and different types of game-based learning and do an analysis on um, all these these foundational things to see if if they are very effective, engaging uh, learning experiences for students. So um, that that's uh, that's all for this short presentation. I want to take some time for your questions, which I think are more important than presentation here. I want to end with this quote that uh, my favorite quote is. Uh, with games, learning is a drug by uh, game designer Rafe Koster in this really good book, Theory of Fun. And this basically means that in a game, all you're doing is, is learning. So you figure out how to use this tool or, um, and, or you figure out how to get past this, this area. And once you do, all you wanna do is learn the next thing and then learn the next thing. So, so as you learn, all you wanna do is keep learning more. And so that should be, how school is, right? As we learn, we just want to learn more and more and more. Okay, so that's it for that. And I want to open it up to questions. Um, and I think Veronica, since we only have a few people here, we can just open up, uh, let them speak if they like. I agree. Or, and that's or... what I'm going to mention. If you want to unmute yourself or write in the chat, you're free to do, would you? It's more comfortable. Hi, this is Beverly, and I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the different, the three different classes and, and kind of what you'll be doing in them or how they will be run. Yeah, sure. Um, Veronica, can you go back to the slide with the three classes on it? See, this is where the animation part <laughs> slows this down, huh? Okay, there we go. So uh, first one, introduction to game-based learning. Basically, we're talking about the various types. So each week we'll be going over a different uh, type of game-based um, 
learning uh, media. So um, we'll start with like, like video, we'll start with analog games and then video games and educational games, game design projects, um, new media, and then gamification. So each week, um, everybody will be coming up with um, one or more just lesson plan ideas. So not, not flushed out lesson plans, but just ideas that how can I use this video game? Um, how can I use this educational game or this board game um, in, in my class? And, and what I'd like to do is make it very practical because if we have, uh, we have a math teacher here, right? So um, uh, how can you use an analog game to cover one math standard? Um, so I want to make it very practical that, that you take away your ideas and you get feedback. So the, the way that the, um, the program, each course and the whole program works is that um, it's, most, it's basically asynchronous. So there'll be some synchronous sessions where we'll, we'll get on a Zoom or we'll get on something together. Um, it, so I use, I use any, any um, communication media, but, but a lot of it will be um, you discussing with your team, with the other educators there, and then with myself, your ideas, and then, um, and then sharing ideas, talking about why these ideas are better than um, uh, than others, and what what might what might work better. Um, and then, by the end of the course, you'll have a whole um, list of of ideas that you can take and then um, use in your class. Um, Anton, I'll answer your question after. Let me go through the other two classes quickly. So, there, so that's the first class. The, the second class is the game-based learning design where you'll, you'll be um, actually thinking like a game designer. Um, so as educators, you're, you're, um, uh, you're taught instructional design, basically, right? How to, how to come up with learning objectives, how to assess, come up with assessment. Um, in order to become a game-based learning designer, you need to learn about game design and what makes a game um, engaging and intrinsically motivating. So we'll be covering um, facets of actual game design and how do you incorporate that and mesh that together with instructional design. And then finally, the third course is gamification, how you can take parts of your class or your entire class and add game elements to them to make it feel more game-like. So you're turning your part of your class or all of your class into an actual game. So focusing on the intrinsic motivators, again, focusing on game mechanics that you can possibly use to, to do things uh, and sharing ideas again with everybody. So there's a lot of social learning that'll be going on. So it's not all, like all the information isn't coming from me and I don't want it to come from me. It's coming from all of you and everywhere else, right? And so learning, learning happens uh, everywhere. And um, the social learning that, uh, that I wanna emphasize here is important because that's the way that's the way we need to learn. That's the way we learn in games. And that's the way we want to learn in the future is that it's not just coming from one authority. It's coming from all, everybody, from a lot of authorities and a lot of, a lot of people that have specific ideas that you can, you can grab onto and run with. Um, so Beverly, I hope that answered your question. Uh, I'm going to move on to Anton's question about working for any subjects. Um, it's work, it works for any subject at all. Um, and because there's so many types of game-based learning, um, you can cover um, any academic subject. There's no academic subject that, that can't be taught through game-based learning. You can think of game-based learning like um, if you ask, is, is video lectures going to work for any subject? Of course it is, right? So it's same, same with, with game, right? Games, games are just another, another um, medium but they're actually a very highly effective medium and interactive medium. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question, Anton? Okay, uh, any other questions? Uh, another question. 
uh, when we're talking about gamifying a class, are we talking about introducing some game elements to the class or gamifying the entire course? Both, I think, if entire course, if uh, if you're up for it. But you know, but I like to start small, especially for for educators that haven't done any of it yet. I like to start with just like one lesson or one part of a lesson, and then gamifying that, and then. Um, and then moving on to uh, maybe a unit and then maybe eventually a course. So, so through the gamification course, we'll be talking about all these different ideas that you can use through from big and small. So um, there's a lot of ways that you can, there's all, there's, you know, there's hundreds of different game mechanics, right? Out, that are out there that all games can use. So which ones of those could you actually put into your class? So we, we, you know, you can start with a simple one, just like with a narrative, maybe an overarching narrative to something and make that like your lesson for the day, just about that, like, like uh, give them that narrative. And what that narrative does to connect to intrinsic motivation, that narrative gives them a purpose to figure out what happens at the end of the narrative, right? So that's, that's an easy one. Um, so. And so that narrative is, a, is, a, is just a simple mechanic that you can add on. And so then we can get deeper and deeper and add more mechanics, add like roles and add, add other things, um, other game mechanics to it to make it more and more elaborate. And eventually it just turns into a game. So if you want to uh, see a good example of it, there is um, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Paul Darvasi, he changed this entire English course into a um, he gamified the entire the entire year, um, and it's called the Wards. Uh, what's it called? I can find a link to it. But, anyways, he uh, he covers uh, "One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest," the uh, the book. And what he did traditionally was that they just read the book and then you know write an essay, time to time about the, about the different themes. Instead, what he did was take the whole summer. And he said, I'm, I'm turning my whole class into um, the whole psych ward in the game. And the students became the psych ward patients and he became the nurse. And he, uh, the first day he dressed up as the nurse character and <clears throat> then they lived through the book as they're reading it. So he changed his whole class into the book to the story. And uh, I'll try to find it and chat it out here if we can. But, uh, it's a good example of entire course gamification. Any other questions? Are there like special tools to deliver this gamified uh, version or whatever that is created <laughs> or is it gonna be, uh, I guess, what are the means of delivering that content to the students? Uh, are you talking about the for for gamified class or for uh... right, like is there like a special software that you're going to show us how to use in the future like that allows to create the game or it's going to be like board games we just have to make up a game like ourselves on paper and then deliver it by just distributing a word document with the rules of the game uh, I guess that's the question right is there like a special tools or it's just going to be like basically a mind uh. game basically there are there are specific tools. I'm not going to tell you like use this tool uh, and show you how to use this tool because there are so many tools for um, for for everything, right? And so um, it depends on what type of game you want to make. So if you want to make a board game, there's like board there's there's different board game tools. There's a lot of board game resources out there. Um, there's tabletop game designer. Like uh, if you ever seen that, you can actually design your own tabletop game, a virtual tabletop game. Um, but what I want to do is, is provide you with um, the, the ideas or the, the areas that you can go into. And, and if you want to, say, make a board game about, um, Anton, what do you teach? Math. Math. Okay. So say you want to make a board game about math, right? Um, uh, so number one, you could, you could either go see what's out there already, see what other people have made, see what other teachers have made. Maybe there's like actual, there's a saw, there's actual board games about math, right? So, or card games about math that, that actual people are, 
have, have made are selling out there. You can go out there and look at those and maybe evaluate those. You could, uh, and maybe even make your own based on that. Um, you could also um, have your students make their own board game or card game about a specific math theme. And then they are the game designers. That's the game design project idea. Um, you could use digital games. Um, you could use like uh, Fortnite or, or something else that has like a lot of data. You can use math in there. Um, so what, what um, I do in the course is, is not to say do this, but uh, it's, it is, this is what you can do. And then you come up with ideas. Oh, uh, I can do that. Let me try this. What do you think about this? And then either I or, or other educators in the course, uh, you get feedback through that. If that makes, makes sense. Yes, thank you. Okay. And okay, um, I found um, if you want to take a look at uh, the word game, uh, it's, a, it's there, it's the One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, he, Paul blogged about it there. Paul also has a, um, so he called that an alternate reality game. And that's, so that's, uh, that's another type of game-based learning. Um, and, so Paul blogs about it there. And so that, that's an elaborate gamified class. And it took him a whole summer to design like nonstop over the summer. And he blogs about that. But um, that's where we wanna get to eventually, right? Like, like have all school be as active as that because the students were just, um, they just wanted to come to class because it's so fun. It's like going to, you know, going to Disneyland every day, and, right? And that's how you want your, your kids to feel it. Um, okay, I think uh, there's any more questions. Veronica, did you want to, um, oh, Anthony, you got another question? Yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted to say like, if, if, it, if it only took him a summer to do this, it looks like he did it pretty fast. I would expect at least a couple of years. But yeah. my question was, so the only thing I, that comes to my mind right now that can be applicable to me is like I, I keep thinking about this idea of making a project like a quest like this yeah. quest video game so is that something you would be also talking about like how the quests quest games are actually designed like uh, I think I've seen it somewhere like uh, actually a class turned into a quest like you students complete yep. these assignments and they get those yeah. check boxes and yeah. stuff like that so is yeah. that something you will be showing what, yeah that we'll be covering that a bit in um in the first class at the end. So that's all about gamification again. So we'll, we'll, we'll touch on it in the first class at the end, and then we'll have a whole class. Uh, the third course will be all about that and all about um, like, uh, so quests are another mechanic that you can add um, to a game fight system. And so how do you um, make quests? How do you make the, like the quest ladder or the, the tree if yeah. you want? Um, and, um, and we anal we analyze like um, why why do you like what's the benefits of that and do you want to make it more complex um, and and then you share ideas about specific specific ideas about um, if you want to make it about math what what category should I have or what types of quests should I have um, uh, what different levels should I have and so uh, we'll cover all that yeah thank you. Veronica, if you want to go ahead and um, wrap up the slide part, then if people have any other questions, we can just take those at the end. Yeah, and if you uh, think about other questions, you can you can email us and I'll make sure to send those questions uh, if they're regarding the classes to Randall uh, for him to get back to you. Uh, the only uh, piece of information that I have for you is uh, about registration. I hope our registration process um, is uh, pretty easy. Uh, so you, and I don't know if you already registered, but if you haven't, you just go to extension.fullerton.edu slash professional development slash GBL right here. 
and I'll put that on the chat as well. Um, once you register, you will have the options to add the course and you can process uh, one course at a time, or at this point you could enroll for two courses, so you have a chance to add. If you have any, any uh, difficulties, please uh, connect with our enrollment services and they'll be happy to, to help you to IP connect that fullerton.edu. Um, let me see. Let me take a second to put those uh, that email in the chat. Um, let me see. So if you have any questions, uh, we can assist. Um, other than that, just please uh, contact us with questions to Rayleigh, the program assistant, or myself, Veronica Martinez. I'll also put those um, those emails on the chat. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions for me at this point. Otherwise, we hope that we you learn a little bit more about our program and that you're excited and we hope you join. Uh, Beverly has a question there. Okay. I just want to know if we'll be able to complete this by the end of the year. There's no date for the third course. Yes, the plan is that the third course will begin in October. So um, the completion date probably is around mid-November. Uh, but yes, the, the full schedules will be coming up soon. So it, it is, it is uh, finishing approximately in five months. So beginning in June, the first one, and then the last one will end uh, by November. Thank you. Yes, William. You're welcome. Oh, one other thing I want to um, uh, mention is that, that since this is a primarily asynchronous online course, one of the things uh, I'd like to discuss with in each course is that, um, uh, to strategize what works in online education. So, so we talk about online education in general and what things from game-based learning can we take into our just online classes to make on the online experience more engaging. So as you saw here, um, I gave like a PowerPoint presentation, which is not so engaging and very kind of, um, uh, it's not good for a game-based learning person to be given a lecture like this. And so I felt that that uh, ideally would make it a much more interactive game-like experience. And so I'm always thinking, how can we make things more interactive, more game-like um, and more engaging for all the students? Um, and so I think this is something that all educators everywhere have struggled with uh, during the pandemic time because being forced into online education and not, um, under, not knowing enough strategies to make things more engaging, more interactive. So this is something that, that um, I think educators can also get out of the, the uh, certificate program. Um, I know we had somebody join late. Oh, Lilia, did you want That's to? That's me. Yeah. Hi, I'm really sorry. I got the times mixed up. Okay, That's okay. And we're recording the session. So if you wish, uh, I can send it to you. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, I am enrolled in the first class. Oh, okay. So um, I, I noticed. Um, so and I'm sorry, I don't mean to ask questions that might have already been asked. So um, it's an online class. So is, is there going to be any like is there a set Zoom that I need to go to? Or I just log in and do a certain required, um, like- We'll, read, we'll send you, know? you instructions uh, okay. to how to do that. Yeah, thank, but thank you uh, for asking, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I know you. It's, you said it was a five month program, but um, so you, you, you moved the dates a little bit this summer. Um, so if I was to take the second course, until next summer, is that still going to be a possibility? Yes, it is a possibility. Um, however, to receive the certificate, you'll get it until you, you complete the third class. But right. yes, if for whatever reason you cannot take one of the classes, you can take the others and then just complete the next time the program is offered. Oh, oh okay. Okay. So ideally, ideally is within the same term, but we know life happens. 
Well, yeah, it's just, it starts right when I'm in the middle of new class, new, new mm. school year. Anyways, um, yeah, okay, thank you. So Lilia, to uh, answer your, your first question about Zoom. Um, so, so it's primarily an asynchronous class that most, so it's not like we won't be meeting um, X amount of like this time, this time, and this time this week, right? Synchronously, like most online, like K-12 especially have been doing. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be mostly asynchronous where, um, because I know that educators have limited time and they, they log in at different times. So most of the um, work will be, you'll be able to do on your own time. And, but we will have synchronous sessions, whether it be Zoom, it might be on, um, I don't know if you ever use um, Gather Town. It's another um, oh. game like video. It's like you walk around and you sit at a table and then the video comes up for people. It's kind of like a little game that <laughs> video pops up um, or that, or have you used Clubhouse Audio? Um, no, it sounds like fun. I just started to use that. <laughs> or we'll use like just, just uh, text chats like in Slack or Discord, I have those available. Okay. So we'll have certain times that we'll get on those, um, but then mostly, We'll, we'll use those and we'll use like the discussion form and, and also any other asynchronous tools that people might like or might, might um, suggest too. So it's, it's more of an open communication thing where we, I want the communication flowing in all different ways and take advantage of online because that's one big advantage of online education is that we have access to so many different types of communication tools, whereas in person is just one, right? It's just the, right, right uh, face to face, but right. in online communication, we can communicate so in so many different ways that I want to um, give people uh, the experience to try these different things out and see. Oh, this might work in my online class, or even in my hybrid class. Okay, so, excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That sounds. It. Yeah. This is. Yeah, I, I know I'm going to be able to use it. I can't wait to use all of this in my classes. Great, great. It'll be yeah. fun. It's supposed to be fun. That's the. That's exactly. Yeah, you know, yes, that's that's what we want. That's or that's what, what I want. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Randall, um, Anton is asking, does it have to be completed back to back? And it doesn't. But what do you have to say or recommend about that, about the order of the classes? Um, not necessarily. It'd be good if you take the, the introduction to give um, a background, but it doesn't necessarily have to be because they're all they're, they're kind of separate, um, yeah, separate parts of game-based learning. Um, and I think um, it would be good. I recommend taking the first one first and then the other two, uh, doesn't matter the order. Um, but um, so the answer is it, it does not, uh, but in terms of time and availability and, and whatever, um, you know, it, it, it makes sense to take the first one first. I also have a question about like how the material is presented in the classes. Is it mainly through reading or like video lectures or something else? And also the assignments, are they also gonna, are they all gonna be like project based or like quizzes, exams or like something else? Uh, good question. Uh, so number one, no, um, it's very non-traditional and I don't wanna make it a, a traditional type of course because that's not what game-based learning is about. It's, uh, it's not um, a whole bunch of video lectures or a whole bunch of reading. I provide like uh, a short, uh, sort of a trailer to the week to introduce what we're, what we're going over and what we're, we're learning about. And then also I provide a whole bunch of resources for uh, that specific topic for that week. And then the rest is up to everybody else. And so we want to organically and dynamically learn together and share ideas. So it's, it's more uh, creating a, a community of learners that, um, I'll give you an assignment. So your typical assignment in the first class will be to come up with a lesson plan concept for that specific game-based learning type. So the first week will be analog game. So for you, it might be to come up with um, a lesson plan concept for a, a 
card, uh, a math card game, and just come up with and come up with what type of game, what what standards you want to cover, um, your objectives, the actual game activity, how you would make, how you would think that would, could work, um, what type of assessment you might use, and then get feedback from everybody else, like Lilia or, or whoever, and um, and then refine your idea so that you can actually take it into your class and actually use that. So that, that's kind of a, a typical um, assignment for the, first, uh, for the first course. And then the resources that, that you're provided with will help you um, figure out, like this is the type of board game or card game that I wanna make. And then, uh, and then you get to discuss, and then we get to share resources. If you find other resources, then uh, obviously I'd like you to share that with everybody else with what you find. So does that help? Yes, it does. Uh, are these classes uh, graded on uh, on like letter scale or is it pass, no pass or what, what are the- Well, there's area? officially, so, okay. Uh, uh, since, okay, uh, there is uh, letter grades, but uh, I don't pay attention to those. So, um, so hopefully the, the, the Fullerton people, oh, well, they kind of know that uh, uh, grading is, is uh, I, I put this piece in my syllabus that grades, um, we need to focus less on grades and more on learning. And oftentimes uh, all students are focused on is the grade. And it, it, um, it really takes away from the focus on the learning. And I, I share some, some articles about um, my beliefs on that. And so what I do is basically let, leave it up to you to say at the end of, this, uh, at the end of each course, say, what do you think you deserve and why? And then, um, you know, and if you've learned enough, then then you obviously know that I I should, I get a pass in this or I get a whatever grade, so. Hey, Randall, we, I'm sorry to interject. Uh, we only have two minutes left and I don't okay. want the session to okay. just end abruptly. <laughs> um, thank you everybody for joining us. Again, send us all your questions. Um, also, Anton, the, the credits are not academic credits. These are continuing education units usually used for professional development. Um, so if you have any questions about that, because I know you mentioned about 1.8 and you were wondering about the semester. So these are not academic units, but continuing education uh, credits that sometimes um, the districts do take into account. So I'll leave it at that. Again, thank you so much. We know everybody's so busy and this year has extremely challenging for everybody. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your interest and you know where to find us. So hope to see you all on June 14th.